Alright, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a commentated video of gameplay, but this, I thought, would be a great opportunity to do it. This is Sekido Shadows Die Twice, from Software's new installment in the Soulsborne series. Just kidding! This is way different than Soulsborne. For example, you can hit the start button and pause the game and leave and go get you a Mountain Dew and then come back and continue what you were doing. This is a benefit, but sadly, there is no jolly cooperation. You will be traversing the expanse in this world all on your lonesome, with no buddies to help you. Even though it would be useful to have buddies to help you in a fight like this, Gobu Oniwa, as he lives and breathes, will protect that freaking castle gate, and he's been doing a pretty good job of it, as you can note by the sheer number of corpses on the ground. And he has an immense girth. I mean, why does he have to be four times bigger than you on a freaking Clydesdale carrying a spear that could skewer you all the way through, that he can swing faster than the eye can perceive? These are the kinds of obstacles you'll be facing as you're playing this game, but... As long as you break your opponent's posture and get the appropriate number of death strikes, you will prevail. If you can break the opponent's posture. Posture can be noted in with the bar at the top and bottom of the screen. The bottom is your posture, the top is your enemies. If you get that yellow bar all the way full, you will have broken the enemy's posture and be awarded a death strike. As you can see, on the upper left corner, above Gyobu Oniwa's name, there are two red orbs. Those are the death strikes that you need to get to defeat him. Posture death strikes don't sound familiar, do they? That's because that's different! This is new! This isn't Dark Souls. You can't just beat somebody to death with sheer patience and dodging and going back and forth until you uh, succeed. You have to keep the, the heat on. You have to bring the bring the heat, the onslaught, and, and, and just... I, I don't know what I'm going. I don't know where I'm going with this. This it, it, you just have to be uh, a badass. That's that's all. You just have to be a badass. And as you can see, I am not quite able to fill this posture bar. I am taking his life out a good deal faster than the posture bar. But luckily, if you bring the health bar down to zero, you are also awarded with a death strike. And again. Very different mechanics from the Soulsborne series. But I like it. And I also like the added dimension in the game. As you can see, I've been able to jump and grapple. We have a Z-axis in this game. It's not just a two-dimensional board anymore. We have vertical traversal. It is wonderful. It is a breath of fresh air. It is something that I have wanted in the Soulsborne series since I started jolly cooperating with Sunbro back in 2011. It is... It's just great. I've been saying for years that if you were to give Soulsborne AC mobility, it'd be a perfect game. That being said, this is not quite Assassin's Creed mobility. You can only grapple at cer certain areas where you see green indicators and nowhere else. But, you also have the ability to jump and hang from ledges. And, their ledges are plentiful, and you can jump over most things, and you get a uh, wall jump. If you jump and hit a wall, you can jump again, which is very helpful. So you have a whole entire dimension that you can use for more and more discovery. And I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm still get the same level of difficulty that you would expect from a Dark Souls game. It's just very different. You have to... The, the, the combat is just very different. If you're going into this thinking it's going to play like Dark Souls, you'll be disappointed. So I would treat it like a new thing. For example, as you can see right here, I have totally derped out and forgot that I have a Resurrect that I can use. That's a new mechanic. You're given a freebie every you know, life, if you die and re or rest, you get a new resurrect. You get one, but you also get a second one that you can use if you kill enough enemies. And apparently, 
if you get the Death Strike on Gyobu, that lets you use the other Resurrect. And that's what happened. And that's why I was derping out and not realizing that I could keep fighting. So, I'm back in it. And I'm using my grapple and I'm wearing this guy down. And fortunately, I do make it to the end. So I'll stop my uh, commentary and just let you enjoy my getting stomped a little bit. And here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. The finisher! Much appreciated after getting whooped so many times. And just observe how the horse just stares him in the face as he gets stabbed. It's ridiculous, right? But on the bright side, we get a memory. Gyobu Oniwa, the battle memory of an extraordinary foe. Da -da 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 -da. Long story short, when you collect a memory, you can increase your attack power. Unlike... Soulsborne, you don't level up in this game. I might have mentioned it before. Use memories and prayer beads. Prayer beads, when you collect four, can be used to make a prayer necklace, which will permanently increase your vitality and your posture. And memories will increase your attack power. Now, that mechanical barrel we just got is how you unlock tool upgrades. So that'll come in handy later. But as you can see, I just hit a skill point. Skill points are what you use to unlock skills and moves. But that about covers it. This has been my review so far of Sekido Shadows Die Twice. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching.